Well, hey there, gang. Jim Jacobus here. Hope this finds you well. It is Friday afternoon after the rally, and we're catching up on some work around here today. Um, I'm looking out the side windows of our RV right now at a probably an 80% empty RV park. <laughs> Uh, it looked like an anthill this morning with everybody leaving and piling out of here. So if you are one of those folks that left, I hope you're headed home safely. They get home fine that you had a great time at the rally. And uh, certainly we hope you enjoyed the presentation we did. Uh, Christy and I would like to thank you for attending. We had a great time. That was so much fun. And uh, so many of you were so kind after the uh, uh, fact to say thank you and tell us what you enjoyed about it. So uh, I hope you could tell we love doing it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So uh, this is going to be the follow-up program to that. Uh, we do this with all of our programming that we uh, teach through the years. And it's kind of just designed to drive the learning from the uh, seminar out into the future and give you some uh, a resource, if you will. Uh, it will not be as in-depth as what we covered in the seminar room. And uh, it will be focused on the primary uh, teaching points from what we did there. Certainly, if you have any questions, uh, wherever you find this, if you find it on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you grab this uh, replay, don't hesitate to uh, ask any questions that you might ask and we'll answer them. Uh, actually, was thinking about after the fact, and some of you had asked this question, actually doing a webinar uh, showing how to use some of the uh, parts of RV Trip Wizard uh, in order to uh, help some of you guys that may have struggled with it in the past or would like to use it in the future. So uh, first thing first, just our, uh, you know, a, a agenda that we had, we're going to share some of our story. Uh, the mindset stuff I really think is important uh, because it's critical to uh, using the tools effectively. And then we're going to go through the tool again. Uh, so I'll show you the chat GPT as well. Uh, again, I hope you saw that and we're like, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, I stay up on technology a lot and it just, it has blown me away what we're able to do with uh, chat GPT these days. So, uh, that's it. Our story. Oh, well, warning again. Uh, Christy shared this with you. I like sharing it too. If anybody tells you there's only way to, one way to do it, if I were to sit up here and say, look, this is how you've got to do it. Run, run fast, run far. There are so many different ways to plan. There are other tools out there. Uh, RV Parky, I hear, is a really good tool. Uh, we love RV Trip Wizard. We use it. Uh, this is how we go about doing it. Uh, we're certainly open to ideas, and we've learned a lot from people in our audiences in the past. Uh, so take whatever you want, take whatever you like, uh, use it, and uh, don't hesitate to get rid of the rest of it. It's not a problem. You won't offend us uh, in any way. So our, our story is we bought our first travel trailer on uh, Valentine's Day of 2019 on a lark. Uh, we were not uh, big-time campers. Uh, we'd been camping three times uh, during our marriage, and they were all miserable experiences. Uh, but Christy's uh, cousin had this RV for sale, the uh, Outlook, and uh, Outback, I mean. And we just took a look at it and... We so we bought it. All right. It was not necessarily on our radar screen, really wasn't on mine. And we went camping that weekend and fell in love with it. Had a great time. Camped six, six out of the next eight weekends. And about three months in, Christy asked me, do you think we could live like this? The answer is heck yes. Let's get after it. Uh, bought our grand design, uh, 399 toy hauler without ever, having ever put our foot in one. Uh, and that was after going up and down the stairs of probably a hundred different floor plans and models and brands. Uh, but we bought the uh, 399 because of the side porch and some other things. And uh, actually never, never put foot in one until we drove to uh, the plant, went through a tour in uh, November of 2020, uh, 2019. And then we took delivery of our rig uh, in December of that year. And uh, just a few months later in June, we were full time. So that's our, our story in a nutshell. Uh, we've been at it for three years now, a little over three years, and we just love it. Uh, we tell everybody that, Full-time in an RV is not for everybody, but we absolutely love it. So that's our story there. And that's Marty uh, laying down here beside me right now, like a lump on a log, taking a nap and everything. But uh, Marty is our traveling companion, great dog, travels well, uh, except for the fact that he just sheds like crazy. So uh, if it wasn't for the shedding, he'd be the perfect dog. All right. Uh, so mindset here. Uh, we feel like this is really critical. And I think it's one of the strong suits that we bring to the table as a couple. And uh, that's that we have a, a really good mindset. Our mindset right off the bat is we can always find a place to stay. All right. Um, we're very flexible about where we stay. And we hope that came across is that we'll stay at KOAs. We'll stay at uh, Harvest Host. We'll stay at, uh, you know, fill in the blank. We, we don't really, uh, we're very, very flexible, flexible about what works for us. And as we shared, we only have three requirements. One is that the RV fits. Two, we feel safe. And three is uh, they take dogs. 
but other than that, uh, that's all that really is critical to us. Um, if you come to this with the mindset of, I only want to stay at state parks, that's the only place I want to stay. Then, okay, you do you. That's not a problem. Uh, we want you to go and camp wherever you want to camp. But we just simply say that it will limit the places you can go. And I'm very active on social media and I see people complaining all the time that they can't get into their local state park or the place they want to go because too many people are camping these days. And, you know, I typically just let it go. I'm not going to get in an argument with somebody because that's their mindset about the whole thing. But uh, if we stay a little bit more flexible, uh, we have more options. Uh, even Corps of Engineers uh, tend to be less crowded than state parks are and they're beautiful. Uh, but you can go to an area and stay in a, you know, a KOA or a private, privately owned park or a resort. And uh, all of them have advantages and disadvantages. Go to, you know, uh, harvest hosts and spend a night there or whatever. But uh, the more flexible we are, the more options we have. And that's why we, our deal is we can always find a place to stay. We're never worried about that. I'm sure there's going to come a day we'll run into a situation and we'll wind up in the parking lot of a Walmart. We'll be just fine. So, um, we have made more than our fair share of mistakes, and we've learned to, as we learned from the KYD guys early on, uh, to learn from them, laugh at them, and move on. All right. Um, and we've done a good job of that. Uh, that was probably one of the first people we followed on YouTube were um, Trish and Mark with uh, KYD. And I think one of the first videos we saw, they said, look, you're going to make mistakes. Learn to laugh, learn to move on. And we did a pretty good job of that. So it's going to take place. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, Christy and I, you probably would gather from being in our audience and everything. We always make the best of whatever we've got. Uh, we have a really good positive outlook uh, about life and about what we're doing, about lifestyle. And uh, we always make the best out of things. And we do that together because we're a team. So uh, those mindsets we think are critical. And the more we can uh, solidify those mindsets, I think the better our experience is going to be. And again, that's our way. All right, may not be your way. Uh, our big plan for travel is we spend about a third of our time down in South Texas, uh, where Christy's mom and dad live. We like hanging out down there and take care of them. It's uh, nice and warm whenever the cooler months are warmer. And so we spend a third of our time there, about a third of our time on the road in Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, hanging out with our grandkids and their caretakers, as we like to say, uh, spend time with them. And then we spend about a third of our time on the road because, as Christy said, it's called a travel trailer for a reason. And we're going to we're going to travel. We're going to get out and see some things. And we have seen a lot. And all we've learned from seeing as much as we've seen is that there's still a lot more to see. And so we're busy about uh, seeing as much of this amazing country that we uh, share uh, as, as fast as we can. So how do we, people ask us all the time, how do you decide where to go? Well, we start with bucket lists. Christy has hers. I have mine. Uh, that's usually the first thing we go is, uh, you know, we look, we're already looking at next year and asking ourselves, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? And, uh, we're doing some research, looking at some plans. Uh, if you uh, did not go to our presentation on uh, full-time living, uh, you would have missed out on the fact that we are both very, uh, research oriented. We're not process oriented people by any means, uh, but we do a lot of research. We do a lot of checking into things, a lot of YouTube crowdsourcing, uh, using RV Trip Wizard to uh, look at uh, parks and stuff like that. So we're very, very into doing a lot of research on the front end so that we don't make any uh, bad decisions on the back end. So we uh, we look at what's her list, what's my list, and what's our list. You know, we have some things we both want to go do together. And uh, our first trip was to Maine, and that was pretty much a, a dual bucket list, although Christy had never seen the leaves change up in the Northeast, and that was one driving force. Uh, the second trip was after Grand Design in 2021. We went to uh, over and did uh, Utah. We went down to the Grand Canyon. We went to the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. Uh, that was a uh, very much a, a dual bucket list trip, but it had some bucket list items in it, including the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. We did not share this with you, but we were married in a hot air balloon on Valentine's Day uh, 36 years ago. So um, that's kind of how we go about picking it. Uh, next year, I really want to go to the Keys. That's kind of on my bucket list. Uh, we're trying to see how that fits in with what our schedule looks like. All right. Just because it's on my bucket list, we don't jam it into the schedule like a round peg in a square hole. Uh, but if we can make that happen, that's kind of one of the things I'd like to go do. Uh, we kind of need to go do it in January or February to really get the full benefit out of it. Uh, and then we're actually thinking about coming back from there and going to uh, spring training for the Astros in uh 
um, that uh, the upper, uh, I guess probably the northern part of the west coast of, uh, east coast of Florida. So anyway, that's kind of how we go about deciding. And then after we decide the, the main uh, piece of all of that, then we start filling in pieces. And we find a lot of things along the road that we want to do uh, on our trips. So that's kind of how we go about deciding. Uh, our toolbox includes everything under the sun. We're not doing everything. Uh, we're not using all the tools available. We use most of them. Uh, state parks through Reserve America, National Parks and COEs, the recreation.gov, campground, KOA, Harvest Host, uh, you name it. We use all those tools. Um, our primary navigation tool once we get on the road is a Garmin 785 RV. That is a unit that sits on our dashboard. Uh, I plug everything in. It's where we're going. It's got all of the information in it about our rig, and then it maps out what is the best uh, route. I do not use RV Trip Wizard to navigate. Uh, I use the uh, Garmin 785 RV, and I also have the TST 507 uh, TPMS system, the tire pressure monitoring system, which uh, I really like and a lot. I think it really helps us stay safe on the road. We do a lot of uh, crowdsourcing through Facebook, the Grand Design Owners Facebook group. It's got 70,000 people in it. And if you go on there and say, hey, we're, we're taking a trip to Mackinac Island. Where would you recommend we stay? What do you recommend we see? Uh, you'll get 40 answers in a very short amount of time from people that have actually been there. And, uh, you know, I tell them we've got a 40-foot to toy hauler. Where would you go? Uh, so we do a lot of that. We do a lot of uh, YouTube, what I call crowdsourcing, which is just searching uh, what to see in Mackinac Island, which is, again, where we're going to be in a couple of weeks. So. Uh, we use a lot of social media to do our, our uh, research, but then it all comes down to RV Trip Wizard is the backbone of our planning and booking process. Uh, if you do not have RV Trip Wizard, you can find it on the RV Life app on your phone. Uh, I do have that app. I do use it, but I do all of the planning on a desktop, all right? And to do the desktop RV uh, Trip Wizard planning, it's rvtripwizard.com. And uh, that's actually what I use because it's a much bigger screen, easier on my eyes, and uh, it makes access to all of the different resources that come available to you uh, a lot simpler because uh, they're right there on one screen. All right. So, uh, and I'll add to I'll add tools to it like ChatGPT. All right, is now a big part of our toolbox, and uh, we shared some of that with you. And I'll share for those of you that weren't in the presentation. I'll talk a little bit about it in a minute. Okay. So. Um, first thing you're going to do is go in and set up your RV trip wizard. You're going to give it general information. You're going to tell it about your RV. How long is it? How tall is it? What kind of gas mileage do you get? Uh, you're going to talk about, uh, what kind of routing and driving do you want to do? Do you not want to go on toll ways? Do you not want to go through tunnels? You get to make all those decisions. How far do you want to go in a day? Uh, all of that's part of uh, that part of, and the, also you can plug in some numbers about average expense for, uh, gas, average expense for uh, night stay, average expense for food, and it will uh, run some expenses for you, uh, which is kind of a, a neat little tool just to get an idea of how much does a trip cost uh, with it. So you're going to set all of that up to begin with, and then you're going to go into the trip setup, and uh, it's going to have a lot of different tools. I'm sorry, this is actually within the uh, initial setup. Give you an idea again of what's available under the RV info uh, that you're putting together. So You'll see here I have how tall. We're actually 13.6, but I put 13.8. I don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> um, if I make it, I'd rather make a mistake of going around a, a problem than going through it. Uh, we have diesel. We got a 50 gallon tank, so 49 gallons of uh, one gallon of reserve and uh, fuel economy. We're flat, dead flat on nine uh, miles to the gallon uh, when we travel. So it kind of give you an idea what one what the uh, setup uh, menus look like. And so then uh, we have all kinds of filters uh, to use to set up the options that we would like our trip wizard to present to us. Uh, and again, you just look down this here, what kind of parks do we like? You can de designate that. What kind of ratings, two star, three star, four star. Uh, I, I tend to check all of the park types. I tend to check all of the ratings. I've stayed in some two star um, parks that were better than some four star parks for our benefit, for our needs. Uh, taking into consideration how far is it from the freeway, how much was, how much did it cost. Uh, so I take a look at all of them, and I'll just do the research on the back end to make sure we didn't make a mistake there. 
Uh, what features are you looking for in a park? Uh, what kind of hookups and connect connectivity do you absolutely need? And again, it's part of the, the mindset of being flexible. If you are only okay with 50 amp full hookups, then you're going to be, it's going to limit you. But if you can make the adaptation to 30 amp, uh, no full hookups and we'll, um, you know, we'll drain our tanks when we leave or we'll drain our tanks at the next stop or something like that, then you're going to have more options. Again, that's your choice, though. You decide that, not me. It doesn't. Jim Jacobus doesn't get to decide what works best for you. I'm simply going to say the more flexible you are, the more options you'll have. Uh, amenities. Uh, they have any amenities you want? Do you like a pool and things like that? Uh, what pricing? And they have, you know, $1, $2, $3, $4, $4, you know, icons. And I, again, I check them off because I've stayed in some really inexpensive places that were amazing. And I've been to some expensive places that they weren't worth the money they were charging. Uh, so I do the research there and figure out what works best, uh, what kind of recreations in the area. And then if you are a member of SAMS or FMCA or KOA or any of those, you get to plug all those in and it will show you those uh, specific parks when you're doing your uh, searches uh, in certain areas. So uh, I actually put this one on there just for the fun of it. Uh, this gives you an idea uh, when it talks about ratings and features. Okay, three ratings up there, three star, four star, five star. Uh, and then some of the features, pull throughs, pets allowed, tent camping, boondocking. Uh, but the humorous part here was that uh, I did not know you could check off clothing optional or swingers uh, features. Um, kind of like to let you guys find that on your own and watch the laughter trickle through the audience. So. Uh, you, you can't say we do not have that checked off. We'll never have that checked off. That is not uh, how we do things. And oh, by the way, if you do, God bless you. All right. You do you. All right. Uh, so planning a short trip, you really can just start with where you, wherever you're leaving from, your home, uh, wherever you're leaving from. And you can add um, the departure date. We're going to leave on Friday. The What is today? Friday the 1st of September. And um, we want to arrive at our destination on Friday the 1st. So um, figure out where point B is that you're going to, if you're going to do just like a weekend trip, and then you can look for places to stay around point B, or you can look for a specific, um, park. If somebody recommended one, you can look for it, that same area, and then do your research. All right. I'm going to show you some of the research you can do in a minute, but do your research and make sure this is the right place for you. And then after you do all of that, you're comfortable. It's the right place. Book it. And I will tell you, you're still going to make a mistake every now and then. All right. So uh, here's how you would pick a specific uh, campground. We're going to vacation station from here. And so I picked it, put it in our itinerary. Or you can just look at a general area. Okay, this is the uh, Goshen uh, Middlebury Elkhart area where this little icon is right underneath the word area. And I just picked that because I wanted you to see all the other, all the options around here, all right? These blue ones are state parks. There's a good Sam. There's a KOA there, 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 but all these green ones represent uh, a place to stay as well. And when you expand it out, you'll see what they are. And if you hover over the top of them, it'll uh, give you a little drop down um, menu to look at uh, that particular park and find out what the details are. When you do click on that park, all right, from the uh, deal, and I'll show you, let me go back here to uh, vacation station where it says park details. If you click on park details, this is what pops up, all right? Vacation, station, resort. And then you'll see a couple of menus here across the top, overview, features, reviews, tips and Q&A, and the weather. What's the weather like there? Uh, features would just be what are the park features. Reviews would be what other people said about that. And I read those in depth. I read them a lot. I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, tips and Q&A. People go, hey, don't, don't, uh, if you have time, be sure and go to Bob's Burgers and eat. They're amazing. Or somebody might ask, is this a good park for a 44-foot toy hauler? So there's a lot of good information and tips in QA. Uh, and so I check that out as well. Uh, down the left-hand side, you'll see their phone number, a link to their website, a link to RV uh, Live Campgrounds, where you can read uh, all of the reviews. When you click on uh, the uh, reviews at the top here, you're going to get like two or three of them. But if you click on RV campground reviews, you're going to get all of them. And then satellite map, I'll show you a picture of that. I kind of like that. And uh, there's just more detail there. Some really cool stuff. It shows you affiliations. This one's good, Sam. And I can't, my eyesight's not good enough to see the other one. So 
that's the uh, home uh, deal. But if you click on the uh, Google Map uh, piece, the well, let's see, the uh, satellite map, all right, then you're going to get a picture of it like this. And I love this, uh, particularly if I know what site number I'm in. I've seen it on their website. I'm going to get an idea where it is. I can look down at this and see uh, whether I have a lot of shade or no shade or I, uh, with a good lengthy pull through. What is it? I get to do all of that. And I like it. <clears throat> and we're going to uh, this place uh, here in a couple of days and we're staying right up here where these pull throughs are. So that's where we're headed. I always like to look at the connectivity because Christy and I both still work. And you'll see here uh, check marks by Wi-Fi and T-Mobile. Verizon has a little uh, gauge there. And you can click on that. It'll tell you what the speeds are. Uh, it has Sprint. looks like AT&T is a little weak. Uh, Charter, I have no idea. FirstNet, I have no idea. Starlink, it's got a question mark. But it also has a list of park features and hookups and amenities and recreation uh, for you to kind of browse through as well. Now, um, when it comes to reviews, all right, reviews are interesting in that it's one person's opinion of their experience they have. So here we have a total of 51 reviews and 31, 34 of them are excellent. Nine of them are good. That means 43 out of 51. Five average, that's 48 out of 51. Okay. Uh, that's uh, better than 96% or a little bit less than 96% if I do the math. Yeah. Two poor, one terrible. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go read the terrible one and see what it was. In this case, here's the review. They were irritated that they had to cancel and they paid a $25 cancellation fee. All right. No exception, it says. I will be boycotting all parks that require prepaid or deposit reservations and take my chances. Okay, good. Again, that's his choice. But the review really wasn't about the park. It wasn't about uh, getting in there with a large rig. It wasn't about anything that bothers me. All right. And by the way, if I book something and I have to cancel it without outside of their cancellation policy, I don't complain about it. I read the policy. I knew what it was. Uh, or if I didn't read it and didn't know what it was and shame on me anyway. So it none of what he complains about is something that's the least bit of concern for me. So. Uh, that's kind of how I look at it, how we look at it. And then I go and read the positive ones and see what they say uh, in order to make sure that uh, we're going somewhere we want to be. And again, they help us a lot. Planning a, a long trip is the same as planning a short trip. All right. It's simply point A to point B. And now point B becomes point A and that's point A to point B. Start and stop dates. Okay. That's how we do it. Now, one thing I will tell you is uh, I use... The big rocks first. In other words, when we were coming up here, we had to go to Kerrville. We went to Dallas. We went to Branson, and we came here. From here, we've got uh, Ludington. We've got Mackinac Island. We've got Manistee. We've got the Dells. So those are pretty much one right after the other. Uh, from there, we go to Kentucky. Kentucky, we go to Tennessee. But between the Dells and Kentucky, we have like two days of travel. So I put all the big rocks in first. And I do my research, I do my crowdsourcing of where to stay. And then after I've done all of that, then I will book those days. And then I will book the gaps in between, like the gap between uh, Dallas and Branson. Okay, we had a couple of nights uh, stay over and uh, we got to Branson. And then from Branson to here, we had two more nights stay over. So I booked those, uh, but I book all the big rocks first. And uh, as I said, we said in the deal that we do use the 330, 330 rule. We always want to be sitting still by 3.30 in the afternoon and travel no more than 330 miles in a day if we can help it. That's our goal. That's what we want to be able to do. And sometimes that doesn't work out. We have to make it. But again, we're flexible. Uh, after you get all of that done, you start looking for places to stay. You do your research, book your stays. And then you can start booking excursions and sightseeing and find out about other things that are going on in the area. Uh, but as we shared with you guys, and I'll share on this uh, recording so much of our enjoyment of these trips is all the anticipation we get from the planning process. And it's something Christy and I do together. Uh, she helps me decide what the bucket list is and what are the big rocks. And then I go kind of do the homework and I'll bring it back to her. And then we start looking at uh, how long do we stay at the big rocks and then where we're going to stop in between. Um, she does not micromanage me in any way because that would not work, but we do collaborate on this very closely uh, to make sure we're both getting what we want out of it. So this is what a full dashboard would look like when you get through. Um, 
and this trip here, I uh, can't remember, 21 stops, a little over 5,000 miles. And uh, you can see what we're, where we're going there. So a little figure eight, uh, drunk man's figure eight, maybe. And then back to uh, Texas for the uh, Grand Design Rally. So, uh, chat GPT. I've been using this as a business tool pretty uh, heavily for the last eight months or so. Since it kind of came on the scene, I started playing around with it. And I started using it a lot. Uh, I use it for a lot of different things in business. Basically, you just ask it any question you want to. And it'll have an answer for you. Uh, this morning, I was playing around and uh, asked the question, give me five negative ways that people deal with adversity and then the uh, corresponding positive ways, put it in a chart and um, do drop down uh, formatting for me. And the content was outstanding. It was just really well done. So you can find it at uh, HTTPS chat dot open you can probably just click that link it'll take you there it's free you do need to register uh you can also uh, download the app on your phone i use it on my phone all the time when i'm just kind of chilling out and curious and having some fun playing around and like i said it's free all right so here's here's what i encourage you to do um go and download it on your app or go to chat dot uh, open and on your desktop or your laptop uh, open it up and uh, ask it these questions. And uh, we did what are 10 things I need to see and do in ten, in uh, Michigan, but you can put it, just pick a state, all right? Utah, um, California, New York, just you pick a state. Uh, if you want to have some fun, go back and pick your home state because you would know what those 10 things are and uh, just look at it. Then um, pick one of those, all right? I picked uh, in the chat gpt we did i said 10 things in michigan number one was mackinac island and so then i asked it what are three popular crack uh campgrounds for a 44 foot fifth wheel near number one all right and then it gave me that um and then i asked i can ask it give me information on these campgrounds and it'll give you information and you can say give me more information or give me more campgrounds or give me some other ideas and they'll do that and then i ask it what are my must-sees while in while visiting mackinac island I mean, can you see how quickly you can get a trip planned from macro down to micro? Uh, I mean, like I said, it's just a really neat tool. I'm having fun with it, and it does, does a lot of crowdsourcing for me. Um, you can ask it other questions about your rig. You can ask it about repairs on your RV, uh, on and on and on and on and on. If you're thinking about, uh, you know, uh, what, would, what would be uh, the best way? Oh, excuse me up too late last night i apologize that's rude um you know what would be a uh good route from here to branson uh for a 44 foot uh, rv and it'll give you some ideas so anyway i encourage you to start playing around with that and uh what you can do with chat gpt is only limited by your imagination and uh one of the things we got through with that we went and had some lunch and we we're talking together and i told christy i said that's something we need to pay more attention to because i've stood in audiences for a long, long time now, as has she. And I saw the looks on your face. I saw your jaws drop. I saw your eyes bug out. I saw how much fun you had when we were playing with it. And you're like, oh my gosh, look at that. And um, when you do something like that, when you're a teacher or speaker or trainer like we do, uh, you pay attention to it because there's not a lot of things that will get the kind of attention of an audience like that one did. So anyway, I uh, hope you have some fun with that. You enjoy it. Uh, Kind of wrap things up. First thing is we have kind of realized this is an amazing country li we live in. No matter where we go, we see incredible things. And everywhere we go, people are just phenomenal. Uh, I think they're actually the best part of it all. And then at the end of the day, we have decided there will never be enough time. There's so much to do, so much to see. Uh, there's never going to be enough time, but we're going to do the best we can to see everything we possibly can. So uh, there is a um, QR code to all of my contact information. You'll see my phone number in there, my email address. You're welcome to call, text, email, uh, and also links to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook group. We'd invite you to come join our Facebook group. We'd appreciate it. Uh, we are indeed trying to grow a following, a tribe, if you will, and uh, you can join us on any of those. Instagram is in there. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. We always ask if you liked it, Hit the like button, subscribe, and please share it with somebody that you know might enjoy it as well. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Again, thank you so much for uh, honoring us with your presence at the presentation. 
Uh, we look forward to catching up with all of you on the road down there. But, hey, let's catch up on one of these social media tools. And um, let's see what we can do to help you. If, any, if we can ever do anything to help you along the way, let us know. So hope you guys are having a great day and you're traveling safe, heading home. And if you're still at the campgrounds, travel safe when you do head home. We'll catch you down the road, gang. Take care.